Last week's video on variable ND filters left many of you with more questions than answers about what filters are good, which ones do you need, are there cheaper alternatives to these really expensive variable ND filters. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the lens filters that I carry with me on my camera lens inside my camera bag. We're going to talk about three less expensive variable ND filters that I think are worth considering, and I'm going to give you some rules of thumb when looking for ND filters or just other filters that you're looking to attach to your camera. The one lens filter that I keep attached to my camera lens no matter what, unless I've got a variable ND filter, is just a clear protection UV filter. This filter doesn't really do anything other than protect the front of your lens. And I know a lot of people will say it ruins the image quality, like why would you put a $20 piece of glass in front of a $3,000 piece of glass? But if you remember from last week's video, this is an ND filter that I've used quite a lot. And I think you can see it right there, but it's got all these micro scratches on it. The point is that wind and dust and sand and just things in the air can create micro scratches on the front of your camera lens. And you would much rather have that on a removable $20 piece of glass than a $3,000 camera lens. Variable ND filters can get really expensive, like this Polar Pro Recon or the new Freewell system, those are like four, five hundred dollars. And a lot of you were asking, well, what about KNF filters? What about Haida filters? What about Nisi filters? What about all these other more budget friendly options? One of the rules of thumb that I usually follow when I'm buying lens filters is that anything that is super cheap, like 30, 40, 50 dollars is probably not something that you want to invest in. Most of the filters that I'm looking at here are around the $100 price point. Like these KNF ones uh, in Canadian, I think they're about $80, $90, depending on which one you get. And they work great. For the last few years, the KNF one is the one that I've shot probably most of my content with. And all of these will be linked down in the description below. So if you're looking to check them out, but you can go back and watch the catalog of all the videos that I've shot, particularly here on YouTube. And for most of them, I've used the KNF. Now, where it struggles is when you crank it all the way to the five stops that it maxes out at. That's where you start to notice the vignette. And admittedly, the KNF does have a little bit of a greenish yellow color cast, like even more than the Polar Pro and the kind of bluish color cast of the Freewheel ones that we compared last week. Now, if you're looking at the the old Freewell lens system, that one actually has a yellow color cast and is very similar to the Polar Pro. So there is a difference between the old magnetic Freewell and the new Freewell K2. And I do think there are better budget options. It, like if you don't need the magnetic features of these fancy variable ND filters, two options that I have here are the Nisi filter. It is a true color one, two, five, stop variable ND and it, and it comes in this kit like if you get it with the full kit it is a little bit more expensive on its own actually I don't know if you can get it on its own hold on okay so you can it's still like 250 bucks so it's a little bit more premium but it is cheaper than the Polar Pro however the Nisi is more color accurate than all of the other options I've tested. But the one problem it has is if you're using it on a wide angle lens, like a 16 or a 15 or a 14 millimeter lens, I have noticed that you have those little blips of a vignette where it's not polarization, it's not the variable ND filter, it's just the camera lens is seeing the end ring of, of the filter. Like the actual ring of the filter is showing up as a vignette in the corners of your photos. So if you zoom in to like 17 millimeters, and actually 16 millimeters is even okay, it's the 14 and the 15 millimeters that I was shooting at where this lens filter starts to become a little bit of a problem. But in terms of color accuracy, it's actually the best option that I've tested. Another option is this Haida filter. It is a one to seven stop variable ND filter, which, which sounds amazing. Like all these other ones are five stops. So when you see seven, it looks really good, 
but at seven stops, it has a really strong vignette. So actually, what I do is I don't go all the way to seven. I usually keep it between like six and five. And when you do that, it actually has as good a performance as the Nisi, but without that corner vignetting because it seems to work better with wider angle lenses. And the color cast is better than the KNF, and it's probably comparable to the Polar Pro, but for the price you're paying for like a hundred ish dollars, it's actually a pretty good value. And the one thing you'll notice with this one is it has a little bit of a lever for adjusting the variable ND aspect. And then the red ring that you see actually adjusts the circular polarizer aspect of the filter. So if you remember with the Freewell filter last week, we had a problem that when you changed the variable ND, it actually changed the reflections because remember, a variable ND filter is also a circular polarizer. Like it's, it's two polarizers rotating against each other. So the nice thing with the Haida is that it has the ability to rotate it so that you can correct for that polarization effect. If you're a photographer, one use for a variable ND filter is, let's say you've nailed all of your settings. Like your ISO is at 100 or 200, your aperture is set, but your shutter speed is like one over 2000 or one over 5000. Now I did a photo shoot a few weeks ago where I was shooting these helicopters and this is exactly what I was experiencing. I was shooting at one over, I think maybe like 1500 or 2000. And the problem was when the helicopter was in the air, it was freezing the blades. So it didn't look like the, the blades of the helicopter were spinning. What I had to do was throw on my ND filter, darken it so that I could set my shutter speed much lower to around one over 200 and then I was able to get those blades looking like they were spinning and there was actual motion blur inside my photo. So even if you don't think you need a variable ND filter or a, like a solid ND filter, just having one in your bag for those just in case moments when you're at an impasse and you can't figure out, oh, like I need to go at a slower shutter speed. Well, that's when you pull out your ND filter and you can solve that problem. Okay, so we talked about UV filters, which I think are something that every photographer should have on the front of their lens as a minimum. The next thing you would buy would be a variable ND filter because you can now shoot videos, you can now do long exposure daytime photos. Like usually if you wanna do really, really long exposure daytime photos, you probably need a little bit of a beefier lens filter. Oh, hold on, not in this one. So these are the ones that I carry with me every day and I carry this 10 stop Kalari ND filter. It's a solid 10 stop ND filter. And this is dark enough, like you can see, even if I hold it up in front of the lights back there, like no light is getting through this. That's how dark it is. But this will allow you to do really long, like five, 10 second long exposures. And with a solid ND filter, you won't actually get that cross polarizing vignette pattern. You will still get a little bit of a color cast, but it's not nearly as bad as these other variable ND filter options. I also have been carrying one of these KNF filters, which, after seeing the results from some of these other ones, I might be switching. And then I carry a six to nine stop Kalari dark variable ND filter. This one I'm gonna use for video if I need, you know, like if I need seven stops, probably like let's say it's a snowy day and there's just a ton of sun or I'm in the middle of the desert and it's 12 o'clock and the sun is just super bright. That's when I'm gonna use this. And then the last one that I carry, because I can carry four inside this little filter nest, is just a standard circular polarizer. So if I'm shooting photos and I don't want to darken my image, then I can throw on the circular polarizer. I can either cut out or change the reflections. Like let's say I'm doing automotive photography or landscape photography, and I kind of want to cut down the glare or the reflection inside my scene. And if you wanna see these lens filter cases, I, I have two, I have a small one and a large one. This one usually stays at home with me. This is the one that I'll throw into my bag. If you wanna see those, those will also be linked down in the description below. I personally don't like using mist filters or streak filters. Like this Nisi system that I have comes with some additional black mist quarter and eighth 
uh, filters, and I, I've done a demo of mist filters on this channel in the past with some of the clip-in Kalari ones. I doubt you'll be able to see, but it's basically just a pure cle clear, clear piece of glass that has little flecks in it so that it creates this blooming effect. And if you wanna see what a mist filter does, you can just check out this video here. I've used streak filters in the past, like I used this rainbow streak filter to do these really crazy long exposures, and again, it's a very niche product. Like I think the idea that a lot of photographers get in their head is that, oh my gosh, all these like crazy lens filters will help improve the quality or the character of my photos without having to buy a new lens. Personally, yes, it's kind of a fun way to experiment with your photos, but it's not something that I wanna always bake into my footage. Like if you're always shooting on a mist filter and then one day you decide, oh, I don't really like the look of a mist filter, there's no way to undo that. Versus if you just shot a filter with a clear filter or a variable ND filter, which doesn't alter the image, it only changes the amount of light. That's something you can compensate for afterwards and like add a glowing effect inside of Photoshop. One other thing to note is that sometimes lens filters will specifically state whether or not they're designed to work with a wide angle lens. This is a B&W Slim circular polarizer. It is specifically designed so that that vignetting that we would have gotten on like the Nisi filter, for example, doesn't occur. It's designed to work with 15 millimeters, 14 millimeters, and even some wider like fish eye angle lenses. Two other things that you might want to consider. Ooh, do I have one? Is the thread size. So this is a 77 millimeter threaded lens. This lens, which is my 24 to 70, has an 82 millimeter front thread. The 70 to 200 has a 77 millimeter front thread, but you'll notice I've I put on this thread adapter, which takes the 77 and converts it to an 82 so that all these lens filters that I've showed you can be screwed directly onto the front of my camera lens. And usually 82 millimeters is the biggest you'll find unless you go to like a super telephoto like 400 millimeter lens where some of those will go above 82. Like when you're getting with glass that looks that good, you're probably using that to shoot wildlife, which moves really fast. And you wanna get, in that case, as much light in your camera as possible. So putting a variable ND filter in front of those super telephoto lenses probably doesn't make the most sense. So hopefully that helps clear up some of the confusion about what variable ND filters are good, what they're used for, what other lens filters do you need? But is there a lens filter that I haven't thought about? Is there a variable ND filter that is better than all of these that you think I should test. If there is, go ahead, leave that comment down in the description below. And if you like this video, go ahead, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like this, I'll leave two on the screen here that you might be interested in. And if you haven't already and you wanna see more videos like this, make sure you hit that subscribe. And until the next one, go shoot photos. Is that okay back there? I don't want too many distracting, it's distracting. Is that distracting? Is that stand in the background?